everyone and let's check out a very beautiful chess game from the history of chess and this is a very beautiful chess game from the famous Hastings chess tournament in 1895 in the Hastings chess tournament there were many strong legendary formidable players who was competing in that legendary tournament and for the records there was for about 22 players who was playing in that tournament and every player played more than 20 games with each other so it was quite a long tournament and a very serious chess tournament but the favorite players who was competing in the Hastings chess tournament were Wilhelm Schitainitz, Emanuel Lesker, Chagorin and of course Siegbert Tarash and right now I'm going to show you one of the chess games of Siegbert Tarash in that tournament and his opponent is David Janowski who was one of the young masters who was competing in the Hastings tournament in 1895 so Siegbert Tarash was one of the most important players in that tournament and in this chess game Tarash has the white pieces and David Janowski has the black pieces Siegbert Tarash starts the game with playing d4 d5 c4 e6 the queen's gambit declined knight to c3 knight to f6 bishop to g5 bishop to e7 unpinning the knight knight to f3 and black castled rook to c1 d takes on c4 e3 c5 by David Janowski and Tarash captured the pawn on c4 getting back the material c takes on d4 e takes on d4 knight to c6 and Tarash castled queen to a5 bishop to f4 by Siegbert Tarash well he was expecting rook to d8 and rook to d8 it is David Janowski played rook to d8 and this is why Tarash played bishop to f4 because he played knight to b5 threatening to play bishop to c7 attacking the queen and the rook we have knight to e8 by david janowski knight to d5 was the better move if bishop takes knight queen takes knight and black is perfectly fine in this position so knight to e8 a passive move bishop to e3 a6 knight to c3 and knight comes back on f6 wasting time queen to e2 b5 attacking from the queen side bishop to b3 bishop to b7 rook from f to d1 knight to b4 knight to e5 rook from a to c8 a3 attacking the knight knight from b to d5 and exchanging the knights also exchanging the rooks simplifying the game well in this position Siegbert Tarash played the most annoying move possible for his opponent well he played queen to h5 attacking on f7 defending but queen to f3 attacking on f7 again by Tarash we have f5 blocking and defending if rook to f8 then bishop to h6 and black is losing you can't defend with the rook it's over for black so f5 and queen to g3 and in this position david janowski felt uncomfortable and he played king to g7 but now h4 by tarash not wasting any time and threatening to play h5 weakening the g6 pawn the g6 square targeting well we have queen to d8 attacking on h4 twice with the bishop and this is one of the key moments of the game can you guess the key move in this position what would you do there is a killer move in this position and after that move black is losing because black's position is paralyzed after that move can you guess the killer move what would you do in this position Siegbert Tarash sacrificed his bishop he played bishop to h6 
This is like a punch in the face. Sacrificing the bishop. What a move. What a beautiful move by Tarash. And David Yanovsky didn't even consider it. Capturing the bishop. And he played king to g8. Not taking the bishop. In this position, if king takes bishop, then knight to f7, forking the king and the queen. Winning the queen and the game. So after sacrificing the bishop, if king to h8, then knight to f7 again, forking the king and the queen. And if daring to play king to f6, then queen to g5, checkmate in one move. So this is why Sigbert Tarash played bishop to h6, sacrificing the bishop, and black played king to g8. What else? And it's white to move. And can you guess the important follow-up? Well, Tarash sacrificed his knight, but David Janowski didn't capture the knight, and he played bishop to f6. If capturing the knight, if h takes on g6, then queen takes on g6, king to h8, and queen to g7, and this is checkmate. As you can see, there is no defense for black. So Tarash sacrificed the knight, but David Janowski didn't capture the knight. He played bishop to f6. Sigbert Tarash played the move, and black resigned. Well, Tarash played knight to e5, and black resigned. I think it's very obvious that why black resigned. But let me show you the possible continuation. If king to h8, then knight to f7, this is checkmate. There is no defense for black. After knight to e5, if blocking with the bishop, then bishop takes bishop, also attacking the queen. If defending the queen, then bishop to e7, only move, king to h8, and knight to f7, check, mate. So this is why, after Tarash played knight to e5, David Yonowski had enough, and he resigned. So this was the last position of this very beautiful chess game by Sigbert Tarash, one of the most formidable players in the Hastings chess tournament in 1895. And Tarash is also known for his very important contributions to the opening theory in chess. Well, he was a very important player in the history of chess. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, and bye-bye.